Welcome back to SciTech Intermountain. I want to do a quick video on a new product that Trimble just came out with. It's called SiteWorks Machine Guidance for the skid steers. Now we've already had for a little while now the SiteWorks Machine Guidance option to put on excavators, but they just came out with the option to put it on a skid steer now, or a track loader, or a skid with tires, or tracks. It'll work on either one. It could technically even work on like a loader or anything that has a boom arm like this. But this is the product that I want to focus on right here today and talk about how easy the components are to set up on it, how easy it is to switch back and forth between a rover setup to walk around the job site and do everything that you would normally do with a rover and then throw it on the machine and be able to do the majority of the same exact things. With your SiteWorks rover, you can do anything that you would normally do with a rover on a job site. For example, I could go do a job site calibration. I could actually check grade, make flat planes, stake lines, lay things out, do all those things that you would normally do with any type of a rover in general. And then as I put it on the machine, it's called machine guidance because it's indicate. It does not actually take over on the hydraulics, but the beauty of it is, is you can use whatever attachment that you want with this and measure it up as a different attachment. When we set this machine up, our customer had a couple different buckets right off the bat. He has the, the normal 84 inch bucket that comes with this machine. And then he has a rock bucket that's a different one that's pretty close to the same, but he's also got a set of forks and he's planning on getting some auger attachments for it. So having said that, a lot of these setups, the sensor itself usually goes on the back of the bucket which means that the sensor is stuck with this bucket and every time you would have to take this coily cable right here that would be hooked to this actual bucket and unconnect it every time that you actually undo this machine. What we did on this setup is we actually just made a bracket, just an angle iron bracket that goes on the back of the actual quick connect itself. So it's not tied to the bucket, it stays with the machine. This is the sensor, there's plenty of clearance in here. It's got an actual hard plate over it. And this coily cable right here actually runs up, and it is a quick connect, so if you ever did still need to take this coily cable off, you can. But that's all that has to be up front here. No sensor on the bucket, just on the quick coupler, quick coily cable, and this wire right here just runs up and it comes into the back, and all we did is tied in power on the back of the machine, and then right here, we've got the actual Bluetooth sensor, the CAN sensor. So what's happening is that sensor information as it pitches and rolls back there. That information is coming to this box right here. This box is sending a Bluetooth signal, signal out to the data collector that'll be in the cab. I'll show you that in a sec. So this data collector right here simply has a Bluetooth connection from the GPS receiver itself. And it has a Bluetooth connection from that sensor to the inside the cab. So that's why it's kind of out here invisible. You don't want it in the cab. But it is super simple to simply take this receiver off anytime you need it. You can actually put it right here on the rover pole. And all you do is switch your mode right here where the guy is standing. You just go between standing mode or machine control mode. So right now it's in standing mode. I just barely took this off. There's different antenna types. We actually have the external antenna on here. Honestly, if it's a small enough job site, you could just leave the actual antenna on the receiver. Now, real quick, if you're new to this product, the sweet sauce here is the fact that the receiver has tilt compensator in it, has an IMU sensor, which means that you can use a 986, an R780, and an R782. This one's the Dash 2 that has the 400 and 900 megahertz. But it is that simple. Just power, Bluetooth sensor, bracket, and then the sensor on the back of the bucket. That's it. That's all this machine needs. And there is a measure-up process. Um, the measure-up process is actually super simple. It doesn't require a site tech dealer to do it. You don't have to have a total station. If you have one, sometimes it's easier. But honestly, in this video, I probably won't go through the whole setup. But you just hang a plumb bob down, just like you would if you were doing the excavator. You hang the plumb bob down. You have the boom up a little bit and it's a down and up basically how far back from straight down from the main pin down here at the very bottom so the excavators obviously are doing an alignment from the receiver straight down to the pin this one's trying to orient where the main pin is up here but trimble had all the math figured out it's amazing it's awesome that movement does, or that distance doesn't change between the receiver and the pin and then you do a bucket measure up. 
So I'm going to go ahead and throw it inside the cab and show you what it looks like in there after we pull it out of actual rover mode and put it in machine control mode. Inside the cab, well, there again, there's different types of data collectors that can come in here. The TSC7, the tablet like this one, it's awesome in here. It's nice and wide and big like a normal machine control. Uh, we just did the mag mount on the window. You can do suction cups or a hard mount, but this one's the magnets on the window. But the beauty of it is, is now I can actually do whatever I need to inside the machine that I would with the rover by checking grade, cutting grade. I can do an infill design with the rover and then put it in here, or I can do an infill design in here. What you do is you just switch right here on the standing mode. You go to machine mode. And right here is where you would switch in between whatever machine you've got. They also have a 308 excavator that they run this system on. So he can take one rover and actually bounce in between two different machines. So what he's got here is the 308. Now, currently right now, they don't have actual different buckets inside of one machine file. So we've got the 265, which is the cat skid steer here with an 84 inch, which is the one I've got on. And then we've got a 265 rock bucket. So we just picked this one and then we connect to that IMU sensor that's back there, that blue box that's broadcasting up here. And once we're good, I can pick whatever focus point I want. It doesn't matter. I can change that from outside of the screen. And I hit accept. And it's that simple to jump into the machine. Now, what it's asking for right now on the top right here is just an IMU sensor to be initialized. So all I do is just go ahead and raise up the boom. And then at that point, you can go forward or backwards a couple times if you need to. Once you've actually initialized the sensor and everything pops up, what you'll notice is the screen doesn't look much different than what it did uh, when it was an actual rover. So we don't have an actual uh, skid steer option yet for a picture. We still have the excavator option on there as the image, but it is in this mode. So this black line right here still represents how wide the bucket is. And I can put the focus point on the left or I can put it on the right and back to the center. It depends on what I want to stake, where I want to grade. And then the cross section right here does show a cross section of what the actual IMU sensor is using. So the other beauty is, is you can put this on whatever machine you want. This is a, a Cat 265. You can put it on John Deere, Kubota, Bobcat, whatever it is, it's not tied into the ECM of the machine. Super simple. Um, every one of these attachments out here uh, is going to look a little bit different. But if I were to drop this bucket, I can actually drop it off and go pick up the rock bucket. And that, that sensor stays with. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So right here is the customer's other bucket, our rock bucket. All I got to do is just come up here and just drop the bucket like you normally would. And here's the beauty of it. Now I can back away from that bucket that I've got. The sensor is still tied to my quick coupler here and you can see it if I raise it up so we're tied now what I can do is just grab another bucket real quick or other attachment that you may have it doesn't matter whatever attachment you have you can measure it up as an actual attachment and dimensions and get what you need off of it so there we grab that I'll go ahead and lock this once I've verified it's locked we're good to go everything clears out there the only thing left to do up here is to go into my excavator here, go to machine setup, and I need to change. I'm going to disconnect, and I'm going to change to my rock bucket. So you do have to change it there. It would be the same as if you had a bucket on another machine. I'm going to go ahead and connect to my receiver again and hit accept, and we are good to go. So now I have all the dimensions for this attachment set up on here. Obviously, this one's not much different than the other one. But if you had a set of forks, um, let's say you had an auger. That's another thing that I was going to tell you is, is you could actually set up line alignments in here and actually say, okay, I have a fence line that I need to go run an auger along, an outside line like right here. If you actually had an auger on here uh, for a fo fence post drill, you could measure it up to where it knows exactly where the center of the machine is, either left or right. And you could even measure it up to where it actually had some depth to it. Um, landscapers could use this for any type of different attachments out here and just change it on here. And then you could actually go and indicate or find where you needed to. Plus, if you had areas in here on a model for a landscaper, 
that actually needed to see um, different areas. You needed to segregate out like a rock or different types of materials. You can use this machine, if you're not even using it for elevation, you can use it for job site positioning, right? It still tells you where the machine's at in relation to the job site. So you could have avoidance zones, you could have segmented areas for landscape, you could use it for doing basements. Um, if I had this on my machine, I would actually use it for the excavator. I'd put my SiteWorks machine guidance on the excavator, go dig the basement, and then what if I had to gravel the floor or fill the floor in, I can just take the same model, the same data collector and receiver, put it on a skid steer, put my bucket on, and go gravel the floor and get to within a height that I need. So this video is just to show you what the product is, how easy it is to go back and forth between this and the rover, different attachments, and the ability to put the sensor either on the bucket or the quick coupler. If you are interested in this and you don't have different attachments, you're always going to leave it on one, you can definitely put the sensor on there. But even then, if you back up, that coily cable is still stuck to the bucket, so you just got to be aware of that. So these are the different options that are out there. I am going to create a handful of videos on actually using this over in the field. I'm looking at sidewalks, looking at roads. I've got a pad that I can build over there, but hopefully this video helps on what SiteWorks machine guidance for compact skid loaders uh, is and how it can help you out. Look into it. It's a pretty neat and easy product to bounce back and forth.